uh, the Western imperialist influence on the world, something that we should be very, very focused on, which is Western imperialism. Um, something that we should definitely be focused on, which is Western imperialism influence with all these, you know, uh, historic wars and genocides that have taken place throughout history. Um, especially this one, this one is, you know, very personal because it's the, it's a, it's the Nigerian and Biafra, uh, civil war. And this is something that, you know, I wanted to touch on and I really wanted to hop on here and, you know, just send my citations and my solidarity out to the Biafran people who suffered the horrific genocide from the Biafran and Nigeria civil war. Um, being that tomorrow will be the 50 year anniversary of when that civil war ended, which was on January 15, 1970. That makes it 50 years here in 2020 that uh, that uh, horrific war took place and that horrific war ended. Um, I wanted to um, discuss in more detail, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I know a lot of my people and I can speak on the behalf of my people that comes from my generation um, are not really educated about the Biafran and uh, Nigeria Civil War. So I wanted to come back on here today and to add on a little bit more, you know what I'm saying, with my solidarity, with my Biafran people, my Igbo people, and, uh, you know, just all the people who suffered during that horrific Civil War. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to get more in detail, you know what I'm saying, to add on to this part four, which was the Western imperialist uh, influence on the Nigerian and Biafran Civil War that's not really talked about. It's kind of like, you know what I'm saying, like suppressed conversation. Because I really don't, and, and, and it's really going to be powerful for me to add my, you know what I'm saying, uh, worldview of the Biafran Nigerian Civil War from my perspective as a new African um, black living in America who was seeing this whole thing transpire from the outside looking in. You see what I'm saying? So I can really, you know, diagnose it and give my, you know what I'm saying, critiques, my critical analysis and my historian skills on what transpired during the Biafran and Nigeria Civil War and the Western's um, influence on it that needs to be held accountable for their, you know what I'm saying, actions. They need to be held for their accountability of their actions that they contributed to the Biafran genocide during the Nigerian Biafra Civil War, which was the, you know, federal military government against the Republic of Biafra. You know what I'm saying? As I'm coming to you today, I just want to give all shout outs and praises to all political prisoners and prisoners of war. I am Haki Kweli Shakur, a.k.a. E.K. Chuku. I'm a conscious citizen of the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa, New African historian. So let's hop into it. You feel me? Because, um, uh, you know, African lives matter. You see what I'm saying? It's something that I wanted to really, you know what I'm saying, emphasize on. African lives do matter. But specifically, we're going to be talking about today, um, Biafran Ebo lives matter. You know what I'm saying? Because they tend to get, uh, they tend to get the uh, short side, the short side of the stick when they're when when we're talking about this civil war that transpired between 1967 uh, and 1970, um, and you know. Me living inside the United States of America, like I said, I just wanted to really put a, a, a spotlight and a critique on the Western influence on this genocide, on this civil war that tends to be suppressed throughout history. It seems like nobody want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, the United States of America's, um, uh, how can I put it, um, incompetent, you know, their, their, their reckless... Um, their reckless non-activity and activity during the genocide of the, uh, of the Biafran and Igbo people, man. Just just not their, their actions, uh, you know, their actions point out to their guiltiness 
of what they were doing behind the scenes. Let me put it to you like that. Their non-actions, you see what I'm saying, makes the United States of America and the Western imperialist powers guilty of their non-actions and their actions that they did contribute to the Biafran Igbo genocide in 19. 67 to 1970 period these people must be held accountable i know a lot of people tend to you know always want to point the fingers at the black people which you should you should i'm not telling nobody not to point the fingers at the guilty of the black people who were a part of the federal military government of Nigeria. Yes, you must hold them responsible because they are dictators. They are terrorists. They are people who initiated genocide on the Igbo Biafran people during the Nigerian Igbo Civil War. Yes, they did initiate that. These were these genocides were carried out by black people. They yes indeed they were. But we also have to hold accountable which I have to do, being that I am a new African freedom of fi freedom fighter. I am a descendant of the black power movement, which I'm going to get into in this live. You see what I'm saying? During the Nigerian by African Civil War. Being a descendant of that, I must paint the truth in the whole picture and hold everybody accountable, including the people who were in the shadows, the people who were in the shadows, the Western imperialist powers, the United States of America, the Central Intelligence Agency, the British Empire, the Western imperialist powers who were in the shadows funding, funding, arming black individuals from the federal military government of Nigeria and financing tribal wars and financing genocide on Biafran Igbo people. I have to hold everybody accountable. I don't leave nobody out. And I'm definitely not going to leave the Western imperialist powers out. Because I see too many I see too many black Biafrans, black Igbo people, black Africans in that region in West Africa and even across the African continent. I see too many black people who would rather bash the black uh, criminals 24-7, 365, all day long. I don't have nothing against that. You, you got the right to hold whoever accountable. But I'm not going to leave out the white man. What about the white man? What about the white nations? What about the white European nations who help finance who helped arm the, the federal military government of Nigeria to carry out genocide on Igbo people, by African people, which continues today because it continues today. 50, 50 years later, it continues today. Who is still financing this uh, genocide on by African Igbo people? Who are financing it? We must hold those accountable from the start, the origin, the beginning to now. They all must be held accountable. The ones who gave them the arms, the one who financed the war in the shadows, the Western imperialist powers who financed the whole civil war in the shadows. We're not leaving them off the hook. Not today. I'm not even, and the crazy thing about it, I'm not even going to talk about the black individuals today because we're already holding the black individuals on the Nigerian side accountable. They're getting called out 24-7, 365 days out the year. Going, going, the leader of the uh, FMG, federal military government, and all those individuals, we call them, they get called out all year long every day, 365. So now I'm going to need some of you to start calling out the Western imperialist powers who initiated your genocide. Me being from the United States of America, born and raised, 
being a, being a descendant of African individuals, African ancestry, Igbo ancestry, you feel me? I live in America, so I have to hold America accountable for their actions and their non-actions in this genocide, which actually did take place. It took place, yes. The United States of America helped arm the federal military government of Nigeria. How about that? How about that? All these decades and years that went by, everybody was holding the British accountable for arming Nigeria with arms to genocide Igbo people. But did you know the United States of America helped arm Nigerians to kill Igbo people? Did you know they had money, finance, tied in that genocide over oil? Let's get to the real truth. A lot of people like to leave the real truth out. I ain't leaving no truths out today. They like to leave the real truth out. Like I've been telling you over this last discourse of four parts of videos on Western imperialist powers that the British and the United States of America are not separate entities. They are not separate entities. They are, they are father and son and brother countries. The red, white, and blue. The red, white, and blue finance Igbo by African genocide. Facts. Facts. And I'm going to get to that in a few seconds with a little bit of information that I've been researching today that I've been wanting to talk about. I'm not going to be able to get to all the information that I want to expose today, but I will be getting to a lot of information. You know, we got, to, we got the whole 2020. All my freedom-loving people. We got the whole 2020, you know, too, too cool willing, long as I got air in these lungs, we going to get to all the information. I might not get to all the information in this live, but I'm going to get to the majority of the information in this live that I need to get out on this 50 years after the, the Nigerian by African Civil War. My point is this, people, is that the research I've been doing and digging up has shown that the United States was very neglig neglig negligent and very reckless during the CIA by African war. Very reckless and very non-supportive um, during the Igbo in the, the by African Nigerian civil war. They were very reckless. And it's evidence. I done seen CIA, FBI files on the Nigerian by African war by the CIA um, organization. On the, on the, you know, the, the intelligence that they were doing behind the scenes. The intelligence that they were doing behind the scenes. During two presidential uh, years, Nixon and Johnson. And we all know that when President Johnson was president, he was a pure Southern redneck, a pure Southern racist. So he didn't give a damn if the Nigerians and the Biafrans killed each other off in mass murder. He seen a lot of intelligence that was being reported back and forth during his presidential um, administration of the United States of America, President Johnson. He was getting all types of intel about the Biafra and, and the Nigerian Civil War, but he chose to ignore it. He chose to ignore it because this was coming off the heels of the Vietnam War. So he didn't want to get involved. And then we, Nixon, and then when we get to Nixon's administration, you know Nixon wasn't going to help by Africans or Igbo people stop from being genocided. He was getting loads of intelligence from the CIA and he ignored it. And the only reason why I'm teaching y'all this is the fact that I need by Africans and Igbo people to understand that these white Europeans that run this country over here in the United States of America don't care about people in Africa. Don't care when you're being genocided. Don't care. Period. It's a lot of stuff that they can stop, but they choose not to stop it. So they have to be held accountable, especially when you got over 50-something bases in Africa. 
The United States of America has over 50, 30 to 50 something bases in Africa, but yet genocides take place. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you, people? What does that tell you? You need to go back and do the historic research to see who was supporting what, who was doing the recklessness during that time in the period, and try to see why these European Western powers and, and what was their role in your genocide. You must see the bigger picture of who played the role in Biafran Igbo genocide. Western imperialism. Western imperialism. Period. And let me just give a brief, let me give a brief chronology to the, you know, the new Africans, the African Americans who may be on this video alive, who don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Nigerian by African Civil War. Let me just give a little quick chronology on what happened. In 1960, and then I'm going to get into the real. I'm going to get, stay on this live, y'all. Share this with everybody. I'm going to get into the deep information in a second. And I'm going to show you, and I'm going to read a couple of things on how the black power movement, if you don't know what the black power movement is of the United States of America, which consisted of the Black Panther Party, the Black Liberation Army, and all these black, revolutionary organizations and movements who are my elders, who are my elders and family, on what was their stance during the Biafran Igbo um, Nigerian Civil War and how the, the, the poor people, the white people, the white leftist anti-imperialist movements, the brown anti-imperialist movements, the Indian anti-imperialist movements, and all the poor oppressed people of America supported Biafra. But the United States of America did not. The United States of America's government supported the oil. The only thing they cared about was the oil during the Biafran Nigeria Civil War. But guess who was the people who supported the Biafran struggle? Guess who was the people who supported the Biafran struggle? The Black Power Movement. The Left Movement. The leftist movement of the United States of America, the poor white people, the poor brown people, the poor black people, they raised hell in the 1960s. Let me say that again. They raised hell in the 1960s, like the same hell they raised during the Vietnam War. When, they, when the United States illegally invaded Vietnam. It was the citizens of America who stood up against the United States of America government and, and held them accountable saying, no, that is a legal war in Vietnam. That's a legal genocide in Vietnam. Guess what those same poor people were doing during the Biafran Nigeria Civil War? The same United States citizens, let me say that again, the same United States citizens that came from the Black Power Movement, the Black Panther Party, the white revolutionary movements, and all the poor and oppressed peoples, the poor white people, the poor brown people, the poor Indian people supported by Afro. They supported by Afro. They supported by African referendum. They supported by African um when when the moment that Ajuku call for independence for the Republic of Biafra, it was the citizens of the United States of America, not the government. It was the citizens of the United States of America, the poor people who supported Biafra rights to separate from Nigeria. The United States of a government, the United States of America government said to hell with all that. We just want the money off the oil. We don't care about Biafra. We don't care what Nigerians is doing to Biafrans. We don't, hell, the United States of America didn't even care about the Nigerians. I'm going to get into all that. The United States of America didn't even care about what the Nigerians was doing. They didn't even care about the Nigerian federal military government. They just wanted the oil. They just wanted money out of the oil trade. Period. And it was reckless. 
And then the United States was even more reckless after the war. After January 15, 1970, the United States became more negligent and more reckless when it came to the aid. When it came to the aid. When all those poor babies and all those mothers, fathers, over 6 million Biafras and Ebos died and they needed food. They were hungry. They needed all of the necessities that a people needed after a genocide. Guess who came to the aid of Biafrans? It was the black power movement. It was the white poor class of America. It was the United States citizens, not the United States government. The United States government didn't even raise no money or no aid for Biafrans. It was the people. It was the people, the poor people of America, the blacks, the whites, the browns, the Indians. They raised over $11 million for Biafran aid. They raised over $11 million in aid for Biafran. Us, the poor people, the struggling everyday working class in America. Supported by Afrins. $11 million was raised just out of the grassroots movements, not the government. The government didn't even care. They were so busy arming, they were so busy helping the British arm Nigeria. This is facts. Do your research. The United States of America, the British Empire, all armed the Nigerian government to kill Igbo by Afrin people. Because it was a, it was a deeper, it was a deeper, it was a deeper agenda. So you always got to look in the shadows and look at the deeper agenda. It was all about the oil. The Western imperialists needed their cut and needed that oil. So they had to support Nigeria. Even when they didn't want to. Even when they didn't want to. That's how evil that the European imperialist powers are. Even, even when they know wrong is being taken place, even when they know wrong is being done to other oppressed people, they sit back in the shadows and let it happen. They don't stop it because they benefit off of your death. They benefit off your genocide. It's warfare. It's chess. Even when you go online, even when you go online, I'm going to get into the real deal in a second. Even when you go online, when you pull up the Nigerian by African Civil War, what I need y'all to do is go look at the section, the section on the Nigerian by African Civil War. Go to the section where it says who supported who. Go to the section where it says who supported who during the Nigerian by African Civil War. And when you pull it up, when you pull it up, look at look at the look at the right side that says who supported Nigeria during the by African Nigeria Civil War. And you will see all the countries on the you will see all the countries in the right box that supported Nigeria during the by African um Igbo Nigerian Civil War. You will see all the countries. And when you look at all the countries in the right box that supported Nigeria, they are nothing but white European imperialist nations. You got the United Kingdom, which is the British Empire. You got the Soviet Union, which is the Russian Empire. Then under the Ru uh, Russian Soviet Union em Empire, you had the United States of America supporting Nigeria. Then when you scroll down, you see Canada. Canada even supported Nigeria during the Igbo by African Civil War with Nigeria. You even had Israel. Israel even supported the Nigerian government during the uh, genocide and civil war. Look, Israel is under the Nigerian allies and the ones who supported Israel until 1968. In 1968, Israel flip-flopped. When it got to 1968, Israel flip-flopped. They no longer supported the Igbo Biafra Nigerian civil war. They switched to the other side. They switched to Biafra after 1968. But my main point is this. I want you to see the United States of America never switched sides. I don't know if y'all can see that. The, the United States of America never switched 
their support for Nigeria. They remained supporting Nigeria all the way until the Civil War was over because the United States of America had interest in the oil and the trade they was doing with Nigeria. So if Nigeria thrived, that means the United States thrived. They make money off of Nigeria. Nigeria's oil, the stolen oil, because they were stealing the oil from Biafran land, Igbo land. Because we all know Afro, we all know Igbo land and the Niger and the Niger Delta, which was the um the main specific region of oil during that period of time, the Niger Delta and the Igbo land had the most oil. So if Nigeria wins the war and genocides by Afro, that means the United States of America, Britain, Canada, and all the Western imperialist powers are going to profit because they're doing business with Nigeria. So they said to hell with Biafra, to, to hell with the Igbo genocide. We're going to support Nigeria because Nigeria is going to have all the oil. Facts. This is where you get the time and period of time. And I don't know how many of you know or how many of you realize there was a, a Europe, there was an American corporation. You also need to go do your research on that. It was an American corporation. It was an American corporation or uh, um, conglomerate or um, corporation at the time called Shell. Shell was one of the biggest oil um, companies in that period of time in the 1960s. Shell. Go look it up. Shell Oil Company. Shell Oil Company was a United States of America corporation. And if you notice during the 1960s, um, during the Civil War between Igbos and, and the Nigerian government, Shell was committing a whole lot of human rights violations. Shell was committing a whole lot of human rights violations during that period in time. A whole lot of um a whole lot of human rights violations during that period of time. To the point that the United States of America had to disown Shell at one point in time. Even though the United States of America was still making money off of Shell's business, this is when you go back to the period of time um when those uh ten those ten activists, those ten activists was murdered by Shell. If you do remember that part of the history, it was 10 activists of Nigeria. Um, well, I ain't gonna say of Nigeria, but it was 10 activists who were murdered by the Shell Oil Company. Shell Oil Company is a corporation of the United States of America. It was owned by the United States. It was owned by the United States of America. Shell. And during that whole period in time, during the 1960s, when Shell was committing these human rights violations, the Shell Corporation was also arming militant groups. They were arming terrorist groups during this period in time. This is a United States of America corporation that I'm talking about that was arming Nigerian terrorist groups. And at the same time was committing um terrorist human rights violations on activists. It was 10 activists murdered in this period of time. I can't think of the good brother's name, but it was a good brother that was murdered in that period of time. He was an activist that was murdered in that period of time when he was start, when he started to protest uh, Shell. When he started to, I think his name was Sawawe or something like that. Sawawo, Sawawe, something like that. The great brother, the great activist that was murdered. I can't really think of his name. Yes, let me get back to this before I get to that. Let me let me break down like the little timeline. 1960. The British colonial powers gives the Nigerian federal military government independence. They didn't fight for it. It was given to them with a, a, a crooked deal between 
Aziki way, non the Aziki way, and the Nigerian, um, the federal military government, the Nigerians. Britain gives them independence. The Nigerians didn't fight for the independence. It was given to them because it was a, a, a contractual deal that the British Empire and the United States of America and all the Western imperialist powers would still benefit off of the, the, whatever is being produced when the Nigerian corporation government comes into existence. It was a side deal done in the shadows with the Western imperialist powers with the Nigerian federal government. This is why so many uh, Western um, countries still profit. This is why so many Western countries still profit off of Nigeria and their resources, the oil. It's all about oil. This goes back to my other live video when I kept telling y'all that the Western imperialist powers has to keep Africa in the Middle East in conflict. It, it, it always has to be conflict. Because they can't let the black people, the indigenous people of these lands, get control of the resources. So they must keep them fighting each other. They must keep them genociding each other. They must keep them murdering each other. This is why the Fulani, this is why the Fulani and the, and the genocide and all these terrorist groups, these proxy terrorist groups are being financed by the CIA and the Western imperialist powers to keep conflict in Nigeria and to keep the genocide going in Nigeria. They must keep you killing each other because as long as you keep killing each other, you won't focus on the big picture. You won't focus on the big picture. The big picture is Ebos controlling their oil. Ebos controlling their land. Ebos getting their own government, which is the Biafran government. And even, this is something that's even deep behind the scenes, is the fact that the Hassa, the Hassa Fulani, never wanted to be a part of the Nigerian government either. How about that? How many people know that? They're not, the Hassa Fulani did not support being one country in Nigeria. Because the Hassa Fulani already figured out that they already had their own land, which is in northern Nigeria. So they did not need to become part of a new country that was set up by white people. How about that? Just like the Igbos in, in the east, southeast, they never needed to become a part of no other country. They already had their own land, resources, government. Just like the Yorubas. The Yorubas never needed to become a part of Nigeria. They had the western part of the landmass. They had their own land, their own resources. So this is how you see how western imperialism has to control different nations, different ethnic groups, and different African countries in order for their one agenda, which is to colonize the resources, to control the resources. Period. That's what it's all about. That's what Western imperialism is about. To get a group of people, ethnic groups, who were already established, who already had their own, and group them together and let them kill each other off. Why you so busy fighting? Why they so busy fighting over religion? Why Hasa Fulani are killing Igbo Christians in northern Nigeria? Why they are killing Igbo people? The people in the shadows are benefiting off of their genocide. And they're also benefiting off the Fulani, Hasa, and the Yoruba people's ignorance and compliance to genocide. Facts. This is what white people do. This is what the Western countries do. Let you die a slow death on genocide and ignorance. Let you kill each other off while they in the background making money off of you killing yourselves because they stealing your land, stealing your resources and capitalizing it and sending it back to the Western Hemisphere, sending it back to the United States of America, sending it back to Europe. Now it got you Africans in that landmass looking at Europe and the United States of America as great democracies, as great countries 
but they're stealing your shit. They stealing all your shit. Why you kill each other? Or should I say, why they let the Fulani's herdsmen kill off Igbo people, genocide Igbo people, and make you think it's over religion while they stealing your resources? This is what Western imperialism does. Western, Western imperialism thrives off religious ignorance and religious dumb, deaf, and blindness. Yes, go ahead. Let the Fulani murder Igbo people and make the world think that they're killing each other because they're Muslims and Christians. That's the smoke screen. That's the smoke screen, people. The smoke screen is to get you so religiously indoctrinated to the point to kill yourselves off, to keep you distracted while the United States, Britain, and all the Western imperialism powers come into Nigeria land, come into that landmass and take your resources. Western imperialism. The white man is making so much money off of Nigerian oil and then they let the puppet Negro Toms of Nigeria get rich why the oppressed people get poorer. You get poorer and you kill each other because it's impoverished ignorance mentality because you're poor. It's all about the poor and the rich. There is no other struggle. There is no other struggle. It's about the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer and the poor kill each other over ignorance. That's Western imperialism. Period. Western imperialism is doing this all over the world. And they use your own. And this is the, this is the deepest thing about the CIA and the Western powers. They would let you, they would let you, uh, they would indoctrinate you to the point. They would colonize you to the point that they use your own beliefs against you. How about that? They will, they will use your own beliefs against you. They will put in the atmosphere they will facilitate in the atmosphere that Muslims kill Christians. Christians kill Muslims. Let those niggas kill each other over their own beliefs and religions while we come in and take the oil, take the resources. This is white, this is white technology. This is white supremacy technology. And then at the same time, the colonization gets even deeper because now they would do it so, they would do it so strategic and so low intensity, low intensity warfare that they will have you praising them. They will have you praising them, the white imperialist nations, praising them, got you brainwashed thinking they coming to save you. But at the same time, they in the shadows laughing at you because you ain't defending yourself. You're getting murdered. You're getting genocided. And so they put this in the atmosphere like we're going to come help you, but they never come. They never come to help you. They haven't come to help the Biafrans in 50 years. 50 years of genocide. Nobody has came to save them. No what? No, no European um, power has come to save Biafra yet. But they will have you so indoctrinated that you got to love the United States of America. You got to love Britain. You got to love the European nations because they want you in that state of mind, that deep zombie state of mind, while they steal your resources and let you die. Let you die. And then say it's over religion, Western imperialism. And some of that's true to a certain extent because it goes back to what I just told you. They will use your own beliefs against you. That's low intensity warfare. They will use your beliefs against you to get you caught up in a whirlwind, a secluded zombie mind state that's saying that these killings are Christians versus Muslims. So they can get you so deeply indoctrinated to the point that you forget that you will forget that it's an external enemy. It's an external force that's facilitating all this in the shadows and taking your land and resources. What is the greatest trick that the devil ever told the world? 
What is the greatest trick the devil ever told the world? The devil, the greatest trick the devil ever told the world was to make the oppressed people believe that the devil didn't exist. The devil exists. Western imperialism. Western imperialism is the devil. I don't even got to say the white man is the devil. Western imperialism is the devil. So you know who the devil is. Western imperialism is the devil. Western imperialism is the devil. And, and the most, one of the most important incidents that took place in this time and period came in 1966. A military coup. Who facilitates military coups? Western nations. Military coups are facilitated, financed by Western nations. In 1966, there were two or several military coups that sparked off one of the most horrific genocides on the people in history. One genocide came from the, from the oppressed side. I mean, one coup came from the oppressed side when the Ebos rose up. When the Ebos rose up to fight their oppression, the Ebos rose up. So yes, the Ebos threw a military coup. But in return, the Western nations came right back and overthrew them and murdered thousands of Ebo people. Murdered thousands of Ebo people, man. Thousands. In 1966. Go look it up. Thousands of Ebo, the African people, were genocided in, the, in a military coup. That same genocide is being displayed today in Nigeria. And the Western powers sit back and let the genocide continue. Because you want to know why? You want to know why they let it continue? Because the Western powers financed and facilitated the military coup that caused the genocide of the Igbos in the northern region. So many Igbos was killed in the northern region, they don't even know the estimated count of Igbo by Africans that were murdered in, Ni in northern Nigeria by the Hasa Fulani in 1966 military coup. In the 1966 military coup that was financed by the Western powers. Western imperialism. Because you have to understand. This is the key thing you have to understand. At this time and period, the, not, the federal military government of Nigeria and these certain African countries that were trying to get independence from Western nations and Western powers didn't have the military uh, equ um, equipment, the military artil artillery. So where did these people get the military artillery from? When the, when, the, when the military coups took place in Nigeria, these were Western weapons. These were Western nation weapons, man. These were British weapons and United States of America CIA weapons. Even in the, even in the, even moving up to 1967, to the Biafran Civil War with Nigeria, these, who weapons were they? Where did the weapons come from? Where did the weapons come from? The weapons came from the Western imperialist nations, the America, British, and Russia, the Russian Empire. The Russian Empire even was supporting the federal military government of Nigeria. Even though a lot of these weapons fell in the hands of the oppressed, the indigenous people of Biafra, a lot of these weapons fell in the hands of the oppressed. But who guns and weapons were they? Where were they manufactured at? Who created them? Who put them in Nigeria? How did they get there? How did they get there? The, exactly, my brother. The queen and Uncle Sam. The queen and Uncle Sam planted these weapons in Nigeria and Biafra. And the Biafras did everything that they had to do by any means 
necessary to defend themselves. The Republic of Biafra was originated and came into existence off of self-defense. The Biafra movement was a self-defense movement to keep their people from getting genocided. Remember what I just told you. In 1966, the, the Northern Empire of the Hausa Fulani was being financed by the British Empire and the United States CIA. They were murdering and genociding Igbo Biafran people in 1966, killed off thousands of them. So in response to that, in southeastern Nigeria, in southeastern, I don't even like to call it southeastern, Biafra land, in Biafra land, Igbo land, they had to find ways to defend themselves. So yes, they got their hands on weapons only to defend themselves and to defend their kids. This is how, and then, and this is, and this is the most important thing that you got to understand. While all this is going on, and this is what Western imperialism is truly about, it's truly about economic domination, economic control. While all this is going on, the United States and Britain is in the background trading oil with Nigeria, with the Fulani, with the Hassa. While all this genocide and murder was going on in this time period, the United States of America, Britain, and all their oil monarchs, all their oil corporations were trading with the federal military government of Nigeria and the, and the Hassa Fulani in the northern regions. Making money off of genocide. Making money off of tribalism. Making money off genocide and tribalism, man. And it continues today. Because history is the present. History is the present. It's still going on today. Bad Africans, Igbo people are still being genocide. They're still being genocided by the same people. The same facilitators and the same people who has the weapons. Nigeria, this is what you got to understand, my, my Biafran Igbo people. This is what you got to understand, man. The Nigeria government and their military are only strong, are only strong because they have Western weapons. They got Western weapons. They're using American military guns they're using British military guns, British and American tanks, British and American tanks, and all these heavy arms and military, that's foreign um, arms. This is all foreign arms. Nigeria is not producing those weapons. They're trading with the Western empires for these weapons. With oil, your oil, to be exact, it's your oil, by Africans, Igbo people, and all oppressed people in that region. They make it, they trade in your resources for military weapons to genocide you. So every time, so every time you see a weapon raised from the Nigerian government, or you see a weapon being used on a Biafran brother or sister, that is a foreign weapon. That is an American weapon. That is a British weapon. Think about it. Use your mind. Unclog your mind out the religious rhetoric. Unclog it. Because that's nothing but a strategy and symptom of colonialism. As they recolonize the land. They want you to be deeply religious colonized so you won't pay attention to the real people who are causing your genocide. They're using black faces. They're using black faces. But who weapons are they? Who weapons are they? American, British, American, British. And I don't care who don't like the truth, but I'm going to tell the truth because I'm holding everybody accountable. I'm not just holding Buhari accountable. I'm not just holding the black faces who are doing the political business every day in Nigeria. I'm not just holding them accountable. I'm holding their bosses accountable. The white devil in the background 
facilitating and paying and financing my Igbo by African people's genocide and all the other people who begin genocide in the Delta region, the Niger Delta regions, the center, the center belt regions who being genocided by the Hassan Fulani who's financed by the CIA, the Boko Haram who's financed by the CIA, American, British forces, Western imperialism. Period. Let me see if I can find this real quick before I get off here. Here we go. Here go. Here goes. Here goes some information, Raya. Here we go. This is the Black Power Movement. This is some information on the Black Power Movement uh, and the oppressed peoples of the United States of America, the United States citizens, the Black Power Movement, Black Panther Party, um, uh, the, the white anti-imperialist movements, all the, the revolutionary movements of America, not the United States of God, not the United States government, but the citizens who supported Biafra. They didn't support Nigeria. But the, but the United States, a government, supported Nigeria and oil. It says, even as the U.S. Embassy in, in Lagos started to churn out pro-Nigerian reporting during the war's final months, so much that the U.S. officials asked the Canadian government to share their reports. Extraordinary inventiveness and a national cohesion unique in West Africa, former U.S. diplomats recalled that they saw the Igbos as westernized, highly educated and individualistic. Analysis appeared to be as captivated with the Biafran leader, Ajuku, as many diplomats as many diplomats, hold on, as many diplomats and journalists were in 1968, the U.S. Ambassador Matthews explained that Americans, the United, the, uh, not, not the government, the American citizens, listen closely. The U.S. Ambassador Matthews explained that American citizens were drawn to Times correspondent Lloyd Garrison's wrote an article entitled, General Juku is Biafra that described the lieutenant colonel in heroic terms and concluded that Biafra and by its extensions was a new symbol of African black power. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. In the New York, in June 1969, in the New York Times corresponded Lord Garrison wrote an article entitled, entitled General Juku is Biafra that described the lieutenant colonel, the lieutenant colonel in heroic terms and concluded that Biafra and by the extensions, General Juku was the new symbol of African black power. Let me scroll on down. I got more information. Let me scroll on down. I'm so I can get to the rest of this that I, I, I pulled up earlier. And what this article, so I can give it to people, I'm going to post, when, after I get off this live, I'm going to post everything so you can go read it yourself. I'm going to post the links to everything that I'm reading so you can go read it yourself. The, and these articles that I'm reading for are basically um, basically breaking down the United States of America's recklessness because they were getting intelligence on what the Nigerian government was doing to Biafrans. So instead of the United States of America supporting Biafra, they chose to step back and let the whole thing play out and let people get murdered and genocide because they benefited more of whoever conquers the oil whoever has the real whoever has the oil in control the united states of america was supporting 
the, not, the federal military government of Nigeria because they were controlling the oil at the time. But at the same time, the United States government knew that genocide was being waged and they knew they should have stepped in and they knew they should have helped the Biafrans. These are what these articles are coming from. And at the same time, during this period of time, the black power movement and the citizens of America already knew the truth and was already supporting Biafra because they already knew the people were being genocided and they knew what they were being genocided for based on what the United States of America did to the Vietnamese when they invaded Vietnam. See, the America already knew that Nigeria was going to genocide Biafra people. They already knew it. But they chose to step back because of the oil deals. Because of the oil deals. But the United States citizens and the black liberation movements and the oppressed people of America chose to rise up just like they rose up in the Vietnam and supported the Vietnam oppressed people telling America, you are wrong. You need to step in and you need to help those people being murdered. You need to stop your war on the Vietnamese people. The same thing took place when the Biafran Civil War with Nigeria took place. The United States citizens, the blacks, the browns, the Asians, not the Asians, the Indians, the poor white people rose up with protests all across America in support of Biafra, telling America they need to do something about the Nigerian genocide on Biafrans. But the United States of America, like they always did, tried to ignore the American people. When the American people told America they were wrong, Biafrans are being genocided. Help them. But America never helped them. And I'm, that's what I'm scrolling to now. I'm trying to get to a part. I want to read these quick parts before I get off here. I want to read these quick parts before I get off here. That's not it. Let me get to the real one. Where the real one at? I think this is it right here. Don't worry, I'm going to get to it. Hold on. Let me scroll down. Because these articles are very long. That ain't it neither, man. I hate when I I hate when I lose the article. These United States oil companies, man, they were really reckless during this time period, this period in time, man. And they just let these people get genocided. I cannot find it. Where is this article at, man? I was just reading this article. Now I cannot seem to find it. Oh, here we go. Here you go, right here. I found it. Here we go. Here we go. Here goes some more information. Why does it know? I think this is it right here. Alone. 
Here we go. Yes. I found, I found, I found it. Here we go. Right here. This is about the humanitarian aid and the support from the United States citizens and the black power movement and supporting by Afro. Here we go. Here we go. And depicting by, here we go. This is the most important part. I want y'all to, to understand that the citizens were supporting by Afro and the, the black power movement and the leftist movements and the, my elders, the black Panther party and depicting by Afro as a vital link in the ongoing struggle of third world. By African supporters were tapping in, and need, and this is the United States citizens rising up against their own government. These were United States citizens rising up against our own government and telling them that they were wrong, that they were supporting genocide. Here we go. In depicting by Africa as a vital link in the ongoing struggle of third world, by African supporters were tapping into a growing sentiment in the United States particularly amongst the new left activists, that the United States was a reactionary. Listen to what I'm saying. This is what the citizens of America was calling the United States of America's government. Listen. But African supporters were tapping into a growing sentiment in the United States, particularly amongst the revolutionary new left activists, that the United States was a reactionary great power intent on snuffing out indigenous struggles for self-determination, like in Vietnam, but also in Biafra. Through its failure, listen closely, through its failure to provide humanitarian aid, its support for continuing British armed shipments to the Nigerian government, and its failure to diplomatically recognize Biafra. Let me say that again. This is what the United States uh, left was telling the United States of America government and they exposed the United States of America government of supporting and supplying arms to the Nigerian government. This is the people of America. The people of America exposed the United States government for arming the Nigerian army for genocide and Ebos and Biafran. It's right here. I'm going to post it in the um, comment box when this live is over. Listen to what it says again. Act, the revolutionary left activist, activist in the United States said that the United States was a reactionary great power intent on snuffing out indigenous struggles for self-determination in Vietnam, but also by Africa. Listen closely how the United States armed Nigeria. Through its failures to provide humanitarian aid, its support for continuing British arms shipments to the Nigerian government and its failure to diplomatically recognize Biafra. The Africanist Stanley Diamond wrote an essay, The Biafran Possibility, that the subcontinent of Africa remains subject to continued manipulation from abroad due to traditional societies that have been shattered. And there is no revolutionary thrust to transform and heal them in the future. Biafra, according to Diamond, has the potential to become the first viable black state in Africa and the crystallizing center around which a modern African Africa could be built itself. Listen closely. This is coming from over here. It states the Joint Afro Committee on Biafra. A small but vocal group of African Americans. Here go my people. Listen closely. Here go my people supporting Biafra. Listen closely. The Joint Afro Committee on Biafra, a small but vocal group of African Americans that supported Biafran independence, saw the struggle in West Africa not only as important for the broader third world, but also to the African Americans. Let me say that again. We, were, we always stood in solidarity with the Biafrans. Listen closely. The Joint Afro Committee in Biafra, a small but vocal group of African Americans that supported Biafran independence, saw the struggle in West Africa not only as important for the broader third world, but also to the African Americans. According to Mary Umolu and Shirley Washington, two of the key organizers of JACB, Biafra was a symbol of black power to the black power movement because it showed that Biafra was a threat to international white power structure. Let me say that again. 
Let me say that again so you can understand my my stance when it comes to this also. These are my elders. Listen to listen to what I'm saying. According to Mary Umalu and Shirley Washington, two key African-American organizers of JACB stated Biafra was a symbol of black power because it showed that Biafra was a threat to international white power structure. And they have shown through their courage and blood in the past two years that they are capable of withstanding all modern weapons the white world can throw at them. Let me say that again. Let me say that again, man. At the same time, these great elders from America, these black organizers from America, these black Americans were telling by Afrin that the United States and the British Empire were arming Nigeria's genocide. They telling you, and they was telling by Afrin what your, who was the true enemy, the people who were facilitating your genocide, the white supremacist power, Western imperialism. They said it right here. This is documented history. According to Mary Umalu and Shirley Washington, two key organizers, African Americans, of the JACB, Biafra was a symbol of black power because it showed that Biafra was a threat to international white power, white imperialism, your true enemy. And they have shown through their courage and blood in the past two years that they are capable of withstanding all modern weapons the white world can throw at them. In the past two years, Biafra has showed their capability of withstanding all, matter, all modern weapons that the white world has thrown at them. For it is simple fact that the Biafra are not fighting Nigeria, but they are rather fighting the great white powers of the world. Of the world. Listen, how about that? Listen to that. These are my people telling y'all what I'm telling you today about Western imperialism. Stop being blindsided. Stop being blinded by what the Nigerians are doing when the Nigerians are being financed and backed by the white powers to murder you. My people been knew this. My people been telling them this. Listen to that last line. Listen to the last line. For it is a simple fact that the Biafrans are not fighting Nigeria, but rather the great white powers of the world. How about that? This is what it, this man, this is why we supported General Ujuku so much, man. This is why the black liberation movement, the black power movement supported General Ujuku. This is why we supported him. Because General Ujuku was a symbol of black power. Black power against the reactionary Western white imperialist powers. This is why we supported the struggle. This is why I support the struggle. Nigeria is a smoke screen. Nigeria is a smoke screen. Who is really who is really facilitating your genocide? The Western imperialist powers. Everybody knew this back in the 60s. All the revolutionary movements knew this in the 60s, man. Especially the blacks here in America, the whites here in America, the citizens of the United States of America called out the United States of America for their recklessness, their non-activity, and their... Uh, in their collaboration with the Nigerian federal military government because of oil that they didn't even help with the humanitarian aid. It was us. It was the black citizens, the black white citizens, the Mexican citizens who, who raised the humanitarian aid for Biafrans when their children were murdered, genocide from hunger. We raised $11 million, not the United States of America. We raised eleven million dollars. The people of America, the oppressed people of America, raised eleven million dollars. 
for your aid for the death and genocide during the Biafran War. Not the American government. The American government was so busy getting paid and doing shady shit and arming Nigeria to kill you. Facts. Know your history. Please know your history, man. Know your political history, man. So when I so when I hear, this is the reason why I want to make this emphasis so important. So when I hear about Africans and Ebos want to keep blaming Obama, want to keep blaming Buhari and all these reactionary black coons and these black sellouts. No, them they just they just pawns. They ain't really doing, they just pawns. This genocide been taking place. The British Empire. The American Empire, the Russian Empire, been destroyed. Nigeria before it even became a Nigeria. Because they was already planning this shit. They was already over there facilitating what was what to come. What was what to come. By grouping all these groups together. Grouping the Hassa, the Yoruba, and Igbo together. That's a white contraption, not a black contraption. It was the white man who grouped you together, not a black man. So why are you still blaming black people when it was the white power structures who grouped you together and gave them Nigeria? They gave Ezekiwe and them Nigeria. It was the white people. It was the white people. It was the white nations. The white nations gave y'all Nigeria. Obama ain't got shit to do with that. Obama won't, Obama won't even around then. Buhari was, because Buhari was a military figure in the federal military government. So yeah, Buhari was around. So yeah, Buhari do got a role to play in that because he was in the military. So he helped the genocide. But Obama was not around, wasn't even heard of. So how can you blame a man like Obama for something that they already did to y'all? I don't want to hear no more about that. That's a distraction. Obama ain't got nothing to do with that shit. The Western imperialist powers did that to y'all and continue to do that to y'all. And before I get off here, and before I get off here, let me get salutations. Let me get salutations, man. This is this the last article I'm going to read. I'm going to post it in the comment box also. I don't even know if y'all can see that. But this is on my blog site, my website. And, and a couple of y'all probably seen me posting this over the last three years. But it's the Black Panther Party. And their solidarity with Biafra at the Black Panther Party rally in 1971 in Harlem, New York. When they was when the Black Panther Party and them was waving the Biafran flag. But also this article is dedicated to one of the Black Panther a Igbo Black Panther member. How about that? Did you know that it was an Igbo activist? A Igbo activist from Igbo land that lived in Britain, who was a part of the Black Panther Party, who started the Black Panther Party in Britain. The great ancestor, the great brother, Obi Egbuna. Have you ever heard of Obi Egbuna? The great revolutionary activist who started the Black Panther Party in Britain to, to combat Western imperialism. Here he is with the great Kwame Nkrumah. Look at that great Igbo revolutionary Black Panther Party member. Obi Egg. Mazi Obi, Egg Buna, who was a student of Kwame Nkrumah, who exposed the Biafran civil, the Biafran Nigerian civil war, a Black Panther Party member of Britain. He created the, he helped establish the Black Panther Party in Britain. Black power. Get on the right side of the struggle, brothers and sisters. Get on the right side of the struggle. I'm going to read this last little part about the Black Power Movement exposing 
U.S. imperialism and supporting. Let me let me read this last part. Here we go. This is about the Biafran and Nigeria civil war from the Black Panther Party of the U.S. and Britain. These examples show how the Black Panthers were concerned with Western imperialism and with other political conflicts that were supported by U.S. authorities. Let me say that again for the Biafrans who can't comprehend it at times of how the Black Panther Party was exposing what the Western imperialists were doing to, to, to help facilitate the Igbo Biafran genocide. Listen closely. These examples show how the Black Panther Party were concerned with Western imperialism with other political conflicts that were supported by the U.S. authorities. Black Panther members attempted to show how Western imperialism in the quest for power also affected the people of Africa, causing violent civil wars amongst tribal groups. The Nigerian Biafra War lasted approximately three years in the late 1960s and resulted from a secession of southeastern regions in Nigeria into the Republic of Biafra. Listen closely. Here, go to, here come the Black Panther Igbo brother. In response to this war, the newspaper informed readers about an exiled, about an exiled Igbo socialist revolutionary, OBB Egbuna, who accused British, uh, uh, accused British American racist. Hold on, let me let me bring that back. I'm getting tongue twisted. Hold on, because this is the most important part. I'm getting a little tongue twisted. Listen, listen closely. In response to this war. The newspaper informed readers about an exiled Igbo socialist revolutionary, OBB A. Buna, who accused British American racist peace courts volunteers for promoting tribal rivalry in Africa. A. Buna also attributed to the war, attributed the war to Britain and the American neo-colonialism. British American Pigs, 1968, page 12. Here, a reader could find an expert opinion about, a, about the Nigerian Civil War, which occurred seven years after the country gained independence from Britain. On the same page that included several pictures of soldiers fighting, the writers reported that Nigerian troops were provided with British and American weapons. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. This is by the Igbo Black Panther Party members in Britain, listen closely, to who he said was arming the Nigeria government. The Nigerian Biafran Civil War, which occurred seven years after the country gained independence from Britain, on the same page that included several pictures of soldiers fighting, the writers reported that Nigerian troops were indeed provided with British and American weapons. They wrote that Biafran troops fought like guerrillas, fighting a war as blacks were sold, not much else, as their weapons were often taken from dead Nigerian troops. Didn't I just say that early in the live? Didn't I just say that early in the live? That Biafrans were taking weapons from the Nigerian troops and using those weapons in self-defense, in self-defense. The Biafran movement rose up as a self-defense movement because the Biafrans did not have the weapons that the Nigerians had because Nigerians had American weapons and the British weapons. Listen, this is guerrilla warfare I'm teaching you about. This is guerrilla warfare, man, from the oppressed. They wrote that the Biafran troops fought like guerrillas. Fighting a war as blacks with soul, not much else, as their weapons were often taken from dead Nigerian troops. The Black Panther movement, listen closely, the Black Panther movement, Igbo leader, Obi Ek Buna, as a Biafran author, also was arrested for obstructing police. Let me say that again. The Black Panther movement leader, Igbo Obi Ek Buna, a Biafran author also was arrested for obstructing police.
The Black Panthers called for independence of African nations, but also openly declared their support in armed struggles that attempted to fight colonialism and imperialism through the continent. The newspaper informed their readers of what was going on in Africa and how others were fighting the same powers who continued to practice racial oppression back home. Telling readers about the world revolution, therefore, became integral in the Black Panther as it sought to mobilize black communities in the U.S., encouraging them to fight against both U.S. racism and imperialism. The Black Panther paper continued to demonstrate to its readers that groups abroad were fighting Western imperialism and colonialism. It was argued that the U.S. was losing the battle in the global war. It suggested that armed struggles of Arab, African, and Latin American peoples developed rapidly in the struggle of workers, students, surging forward. And that's it. That's it. So now, as I got that all, got that all out, as you can see, it was the black, the black liberation struggle, the oppressed U.S. citizens, and the U.S. citizens period from the left, from the revolutionary left, who supported by Afro when the United States of America was supporting the genocide on by African Igbo people. You even had Igbo Black Panther Party members, one of your own, one of your own great revolutionaries who was born in Igbo land who moved to Britain and who exposed the truth, the lies, and the deceit of what was going on in the Biafran um, Nigerian Civil War. It was an Igbo revolutionary Black Panther brother who exposed all the true people who needed to be held accountable. Western imperialism. Western imperialism. So now you see what I descend from and where my political views come from. So when you see me online calling out contradictions from the Western imperialist nations, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me because I don't support Western imperialism. When you're supporting Donald Trump, you're supporting Western imperialism. When you supported Obama, you were supporting Western imperialism. I don't, sugarcoat, I don't sugarcoat nobody who's coming out of the Western empires. I call them all out. Because it's black people first. It's black people first. It's Africa first. African people first. That's what I stand for. I stand for Africa first. Black people first. Oppressed people first. So on that note, man, I'm going to sign off on that note. I don't even know what I did with my. Oh, here we go. On that note, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to pour this libation in honor of all the 6 million victims. The 6 million victims mainly were children. For all the people who don't know what happened in that by afro nigerian civil war and conflict. Man. Some of the most horrendous, some of the most horrendous deaths were children who died of starvation, who was cut off by the U.S. US British imperialist powers and the federal military government of Nigeria, who cut off all aid to the Biafrans and the Igbo people. That's what you call sanctions. That's the video I did the other day. Sanctions. Sanctions are illegal terrorism. So when the U.S. British Empire and the Nigerian government colluded together to cut off the food supply, to cut off all resources to the Biafran people after the war was over, that was sanctions. Sanctions still being taken place today. Sanctions. Sanctions. Over 6 million died. Majority. Kids. Poor babies were being displayed all through Western media, Western magazines, putting Biafran hungry kids all on magazines after they done starved them to death. 
That's how crazy Western imperialism is. They would put biafran starving babies all on our TV sets in America. Starving, died. But they caused it. They caused the genocide. But they had the nerve to display it through every black, every country's home, on the TV, on the news, in magazines. Devils. Pure devils. And then try to pretend like they didn't have nothing to do with the genocide, man. When they caused the genocide, six million Ebos dead. Majority of them, children, dead. So I put this libation out in the memory of all those guerrilla fighters of the Biafran um, military arm, all the children, mothers, fathers who died from starvation, who died from starvation in 1970, between 1967 and 1970. I put his libation out in their memories that they're still walking with us. They still, you know, guiding us from the ancestral realm. I pray that their deaths don't go in vain. I pray that they always be remembered. Especially the kids, the babies that started them. I pray that they always be remembered. Because not only were they victims of Nigerian genocide, they were victims of Western imperialist genocide. So I pour this libation in their memories. And that we all always keep them in our memories. And always spread the truth about what happened. In the Biafran Civil War, the Nigerian Civil War. I pour this libation out in their memory. Ise. 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 Let me get them Ise's up. Ise. 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 In their memories, in those keep in them babies' memories, all the six million that died. He say, he say, let me get the he say, he say, fill my fill my comments up with he say, he say, the struggle continues. The struggle continues, my brothers and sisters. I love you all, man. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to sign off. Hockey Quaddy Shark Corps, a.k.a. E.K. Chuku. Free the land. Free by Afro. Free New Africa. Ise. 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 On the 50 years, man. 50 years. Never forget what happened to Igbo by Afro people, man. 50 years. And, and, and what's most important, pay attention to what's going on now because it's still going on. They're still being genocided. So all my black people in America, go do your research on what's going on in Nigeria, in, so in southeastern Nigeria, and what's happening to Biafran Igbo people. It's a genocide. Ise. I love y'all, man. I'm out.